Well, good evening viewers. Today we're back working on this 2012 Buick Verano and I've obtained a, another used EBCM assembly out of a 15 Verano and I checked with the dealer on the, the part number and apparently it's the same module. There's no identification numbers on the module that are relevant. So we're going to try to flash program this one to the vehicle now. So here we go again. Take three. I clicked connect vehicle and nothing happened. Now oh, there we go. SPS. Replace and reprogram. Next. Electronic brake control module. Configuration. Next. So it checks the VIN in the ECM, I would imagine. Let's make sure it will take up one of my VIN slots. Yes, I know. Downloading the file. Performing ECU configuration. Please. Proceed with same VIN. Well, that's some further than we got last time. So now we gotta go in and do programming. Next. So, note to self, get the VIN number from the donor vehicle and have the dealership compare the part numbers that you're about to put in. Don't go by the visual outside of the module. Okay, next. Start programming. If you watched the previous video, you'd find out that I wasted a couple of hours trying to flash this thing because it was from a 2014 Chevy Cruze, which according to the salvage yard was compatible if it had the right brake option. And I think they did mention that to me and I didn't pursue it and I should have. One of those examples of you got to pay to go to school. Well, I wasted a couple of hours, but I got to use my bench programming tool try it out at least. I was going to contemplate bench programming this one, but I figured, you know what, just let's do it in the car and see if it'll go through. SPS needs to validate the VIN. If you don't have the vehicle connected, you're not going to be able to validate the VIN unless you manually can enter it. Now there's a setup procedure like Proceed with same VIN, and the setup procedure may require that I apply the brakes, so I'm going to have to leave that. Let's see what it says. Setup. I don't have it physically installed, I just have it electrically plugged in. Align the front wheel straight center of the steering wheel. I'm going to abort this, this portion of it until we are actually installed. 
but I'm pretty confident that this module is going to work. I'm going to install the whole assembly. I'm not going to bother taking it apart because I have to un undo all the brake lines to get the module out of there. So I might as well just put the whole assembly in. That way we're not disturbing the, the seal on the connection between the module and the EHCU. Oh, let's scan it now and see what codes it's got. So we're using the Think Tool Pro Plus here. I didn't do a network code clear after that programming event, and I'm sure we have codes. Smart scan. Five codes in the ECM. I'll pick up when we get to the end of this. So I'm not going to bother looking at the report. I'm just going to clear the codes because that programming event generates a bunch of codes. The uh, SPS software would allow me to do a network code clear, but I neglected to do it. So we're doing a network code clear. It's fairly quick. Uh oh. Well, we still have two codes in the EBCM. Probably the setup not complete. Steering wheel sensor relearn is one of them, I'm sure, because it mentioned putting the wheel straight ahead. Let's see what's in here. Incorrect immobilizer identifier received malfunction. Yeah, electronic control unit software calibration not learned. B3902. Hmm. Let's see what this one says. Driver window and license plate light. I don't care about those. Well, I guess we got to... Let's go into the BCM and check the VIN number in there. Uh, module information. C41 655 21. C41 -21. So the VIN number is correct. I use this uh, software to give the dealership this base part number. This 13379502 was the number that was in that other module. 13352409, 3, but that number didn't compute. According to the parts department, it didn't make sense. Base model part number. You would think that would be the, the real part number, but it's 13385430. And I don't see that anywhere. Just for shits and giggles, I'm going to try erasing that fault code out of the ABS. Read fault code, DTC display. Incorrect immobilizer identifier received, malfunction current. I'll have to do some research on that one. I don't know if that one's going to generate any any fault codes, but I haven't started it, so I'm going to start it. Well, I'm going to look into that fault code that uh, 
B3902-00. Uh, one of the fellows on uh, the diagnostic network, Jake Barnes, was helping me out and I thank him greatly for his assistance. Um, he mentioned a specific code and I'm going to have to check my message with him to see if that's the one he mentioned. But I'm not going to lose any sleep over this. And we do have to do the uh, calibration. Uh, there are several functional tests, special functions. Steering wheel angle sensor learn, brake pressure sensor calibration, and lot yaw rate learn. I'm sure those are what's involved in that setup. But again, the module is just electrically connected in there and I'm sure that it's got to be mounted and the brakes, brake pressure sensor working inside the ABS hydraulic unit. So we're going to close this one off for now and I'll post a follow-up video when I mechanically install the ABS unit, which should be fun. And of course, we still have that intermittent bucking, surging, cutting out condition. Um, that still occurred even with the ABS hydraulic even with the ABS module can bypassed. I put jumpers between pins 9 and 10 and pin between 11 and 12 to continue the CAN bus network to the ECM so that I could start and run it and it still acted up. It would cut out and surge while idling and stall. I never drove it like that but I didn't need to. I just ran it in the shop like it's running right now and it seems to be running fine. So I'm going to let it run for a while while I put some panels back together. Why not? Well, that didn't last very long. I had the vehicle running at an idle and it just stalled. Let's do a network scan again and see what goes on. We know we had a definite problem in the EBCM because we had no communication and all the voltages and wake up signal was there. But we still got some kind of either a module breaking down or a communication problem. And sometimes it won't crank so it's not getting the uh, passive anti-theft request from the BCM to the ECM. The EBCM is offline. Huh. Well, isn't that special? Lost communication with the brake control module. So do we have a wiring issue with that wake up signal? I mean, I tested it. I tested the wire from the BCM to the EBCM for continuity and I, I ran a, a 194 bulb on it by supplying power at the EBCM connector and it loaded fine. Do we have a pin problem at the EBCM? Oh brother. So all of the modules in red are reporting loss of communication with the EBCM. And it's offline. <sighs> wow. When it rains, it pours. I tried starting it again and it started. We still have no communication with the EBCM. Now I did load test the powers and grounds. Pin uh, one is power, battery power from a heavy fuse and that's good. Pin 25 is battery power. Pin 13 is ground. I load tested those with a headlight. The wake up signal seems to be okay unless it's losing that wake up signal. But it's running again now.
but we got no communication with the used EBCM. I'm going to plug the original one back in. So I've got the original module plugged back in again. And it's talking now. Damn. And it wasn't talking before. So it's got to be a, a connection problem at that module that I missed. That's clear DTCs. Could be the CAN bus wires going in and out of the module. Maybe there's a broken terminal. I never took the back of the connector apart, but I did wiggle the connection while it was running. This is with the original EBCM in place. Why is that one blue? Oh, it just says scanned. I'm doing a network code clear. Well, I'm certainly glad I didn't spend several hundred dollars on a EBCM. I'm going to start it and run it and wiggle the connections. So it's running now and I wiggled the connections at the ABS but then I did a rescan. but this is with the original EBCM and it wouldn't communicate before and we got a pump motor malfunction and a control module communication bus malfunction an electronic control unit hardware malfunction. So we're not out of the woods yet. Let's try clearing those. In the first video I had no communication with the EBCM and I plugged it in, unplugged it and plugged it back in a couple of times. So those codes cleared. And we still got the, see the ECM is complaining, or the BCM is complaining about a loss of communication with the ECM. So there's a network issue in this thing. I wonder if we disconnect the battery and put uh, an ohmmeter across pin six and 14 at the DLC to measure terminating resistance, which I did and it was 63 ohms. But then if I graph it and start moving some wires and see if I can see a change, I'm gonna do that. So I got a breakout box connected to the DLC. I got the battery negative post disconnected. And we're reading 62 ohms across pins six and 14. Uh, we had 63 before, but I don't think I zeroed the ohm meter. I did this time. I wiggled the harnesses or moved the connections around the ABS module and nothing changes. But this thing can run for 15 minutes and then stall out and then we, we had no communication with the EBCM. So the network is designed in series. So it goes from pin six and 14 through the BCM and then this goes off to other modules. Then it goes to the OnStar module, telecommunications module. Then it goes to the power steering control module and then to the EBCM and then to the transmission module and the ECM last. So when it dies, we lose communication with this. So that theoretically means the network is fine because we still got communication with the automatic transmission control module and the ECM. So I don't think it's a network problem I wonder if we could be losing that wake-up signal to the EBCM. But then again, if it's the EBCM that's causing the problem, I bypassed the EBCM connector by jumping pin 11 to 12 and pin 9 to 10 at the ECU connector with the module unplugged, and it still stalled and cut out and surged and wouldn't crank once or twice. So that doesn't make sense. This is becoming an interesting problem. I'm sure it's gonna turn out to be something very stupid. There's no connections. Well, there is a connector here, but how could it be the network when we, when the EBCM was offline, we still had communication with the automatic transmission and the ECM up here. 
unless they're talking on another network. One way to tell, well, I know if I have, if I have, well, easy enough to do is unplug the connector at the EBCM and see if I can still talk to these two modules. Because I know the ECM is on a couple of networks. You might have serial data to it as well. I don't think the automatic transmission controller has more than one network to it though, but it's hard to say. You can't tell by this schematic. Hmm. So I'm trying an experiment. I've got the EBCM connector unplugged and we're going to see if we can talk to the ECM and the TCM. So let's do a smart scan. I obviously reconnected the battery, reconnected the... So we can't talk to the ECM, we can't talk to the TCM, obviously the EBCM, but we should have power steering control. We won't be able to talk to that one. Power steering control should communicate. That's odd. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Unless this schematic from GM is incorrect on the topology of the way this thing is laid out. Because we I've got this plug unplugged, so we should still have communication with the power steering control module, the uh, OnStar telecommunications module, and obviously the BCM. Where's the telecommunications module? That's transmission control. Uh, headlamp control. Why would the fuel pump control module be offline? Maybe this car, no, this car has OnStar. Oh, there it is there. Hmm. Obviously the car won't start or crank in this situation. Well, I'm gonna have to do some digging. I think I'm gonna monitor that uh, communication enable circuit for a voltage drop at the EBCM while it's running, which means taking the cover off the back of that EBCM connector. So I've taken the uh, cover off, take the snap ring, or snap ring, the tie wrap off the uh, harness side, and there's a little clip here. Push that clip and the connector pops off. So I'm back pinning the white blue wire pin eight and i'm going to watch the voltage that should be 12 volts whenever the key is on and whenever the ecm or the bcm is waking up the module Let's let it run for a while and see what happens. See if we lose that 12 volts on that wire. Remember that dud did come from the split. Well, you saw it stall. And I still got 12 volts. I mean, the charging system stopped charging when it quit. I bet you it won't crank again. 
can see we have activity on pin 6 and 14. Can you see why I thought it was an EBCM? I'm going to lab scope the CAN bus again. So here's a recording of the CAN H and CAN L. The green trace is CAN H and the yellow trace is CAN L. And it looks textbook perfect, but then it quit. And this is what it did when it quit. I'm fast forwarding. So you can see the network went stupid looking. And then after it quit, just for one package there, it's back to normal again. Yeah, that package looks a little noisy. I'm going to try running it again. Like that waviness to the CAN bus signal is pretty much a normal occurrence on GMs that I've seen in the past. Some are way worse than that. I wonder if I turn the power steering. I wonder if it could be a, a wiring issue at the power steering control module because the network goes from the power steering control module to the ABCM. But then why would it just affect the ABCM? I don't get it. Now it's going to run fine. So it stumbled, but it didn't stall. So I'm going to see if I can pick up a package again where that CAN bus signal looks erratic. Come on. Yeah, there it is. Notice how noisy the CAN uh, CAN low wire is. That's pin 14. That's an irregular pattern. There it looks normal. And there it, something's affecting that CAN low network like from what I can tell. I'm recording it again. Oh, brother. Well, the good news is maybe we don't need an EBCM, which would save a lot of hassle. I'm glad I did buy a new one. Hmm. So I'm somewhat at a loss now. Got no communication with the EBCM and the vehicle's running. Yet once in a while it'll communicate. I tried wiggling these two pins at the ECU, at the EBCM. I tried pulling on the wires up and down while it was running and no change. But right now we got no communication with the EBCM. So do we have multiple problems? I. I I don't think so. I think it's one problem, but could we have a problem with this connector here? 
X121. Where is that X121? Somewhere under the hood. I'm going to see if I can find that. But that's the next logical place to go because if there was a problem with the wiring between, I think that was the one that we said was under the battery tray. So that's the connector X121 and the GM component location just said under battery tray. But it has the CAN networks going through it. I think I'm going to look for that connector. Being under the battery tray, it could be exposed to battery acid leaking. Component location didn't specify where the connector was. It didn't show a picture of it. It just gave a textual description, I think. So as you can see in this master component list, X121 has no picture, unless it might be near X118. Let's try that front bumper harness. Because sometimes they show that, no, that's, that's not going to do it. So let's go back. Let's try all data. Our motor component list. Let's try this. I'll do a keyword search for X121. Not, no such luck. Well, I'm going to look for that connector, but I'm going to call it a night. It's nine o'clock at night and uh, I'm done for the day, physically and mentally.